What I'm going to do using Adobe Bridge and a little bit of Photoshop is show you a very quick way to edit your raw files to JPEG. So to start with, you would have downloaded your card, your SD card or your compact flash card. First thing I do is I always name the folder in numerical order to how many SD cards or compact flash cards I'm using. In this instance, I'm using one, so I'll call it raw one. And I'll just give it today's date, which is the 11th or 2-23. Sometimes I would put a name in there, depending on the client, the job or personal project. Make the file name. So now go into Bridge. So this is my workspace. I like Content, Preview, Folders. You can change the workspace up here. And there's the workspace. And there's a few different options there. I'll click on, say, Essentials. Slightly different. I'll click on another one. Let's go Light Table. Still a little bit bland. Um, workflow. Right, there's a little bit of a different one. If I close Bridge and then open it up later, it would default straight into this one. It's usually the last one you've had on. You can customize these by holding on the left side of your mouse and just dragging them around. So I'll, I'll just show you as an example. Uh, I'll drop it there. I can move it down to the bottom there. You can also click on window and you'll see the segments of the workspace here. So that's content network. So if I went into content there, it would disappear. When you've made a workspace you like, then you can save as new workspace and I'll put the name in there and press OK. I've already got one, here it is. And that will take me to content preview folders. So I use folders to root my file and there it is, raw, raw one. And you will see immediately on clicking on the folder that I get all of the images on the content plane here. If I click on an image, I will get it in the preview. Excuse the content matter, a random SD card I had in a pile of, of old SD cards, something I was looking at for stock a few years ago. So I'm going to pick three. And then I'm going to convert them into JPEG. What I do is I'll just click on a random image. There you go. The first thing I'll do, I'll press space. Press space gives you full screen. And then I'm going to left click on my mouse just to check the focus. There you go. Just coming in there. It's OK. I'm going to select that. I'm going to use that. And so I would. If you see where my mouse is there, it's sort of five stars. So I've just selected it. I usually go for five stars. I only do usually one edit from the batch I'm working on. But if you wanted to make a complicated edit, you could go to label here and you can see there's different colors for different edit selections or whatever. If I click on red, it'll give me a red. And if I just click on label again and I put no label, it will take it off. So I'm just going to find a different picture. There you go. That's a little different. I'm just going to space, zoom in. That's OK. What I'm going to do now is change the exposure. I can do it two ways. I could double click here and it'll open up into camera roll through Photoshop. Or I can click on this little circle, which looks like an aperture ring. And I'll just double click on that. And that will take me into camera roll. I'll just press Control Z roll there to zoom back out. I don't really do much of this, but I'll show you a couple of things. This sort of Adobe presets here. So if I click Adobe, that uh, just gives it a little tone. Just Adobe Standard, Adobe vivid it just sort of saturates desaturates gives you a different profile i just prefer adobe color you can change the white balance as shot or, or if it's looking a little bit blue or it's looking a little bit yellow or whatever 
you can change it I'll give it that and it really makes it it makes it a bit too yellow I'm gonna go a shot what I do want to do is tweak the exposure up and just add a little bit of yellow onto it just give it a little bit of sunshine even though there's there we go just give it a little punch and then I'm gonna go into temperature just touch on the yellow that's it I don't really do much else here I don't really want to interfere with the shot if I started putting lots of different things here and looking at the contrast and it really just kills the image and press zero and zero that's it I'm done you can see now I've got three lines and three dots together that tells you you've been editing it and adding more metadata to the image it's really handy if you've got a hundred or so pictures and you've tweaked one or two of them and you can easily tell the images that you've actually edited so I'm going to pick this one and I'm going to just bring it down a little bit so I'm going to back into camera raw control zero and then bring it down a little bit add a little bit of sun just a little bit of warmth that'll do me I can do more with the contrast later in Photoshop if I want to give it a little bit more edge and then I'm going to five star it I'm just going to pick one more they're all pretty similar I do apologize it's slightly different I think it looks nice but I'm just going to for the sake of this I don't know why it's defaulting into the zoom in go I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow done and then I'm going to five star it remember I'm showing you workflow management here which is organizing your files as you're moving through the edit process and this is for me has always been important because I've always shot a lot of work and I've always created a lot of images for myself and for clients and stuff so day to day I've always been shooting quite a lot of pictures I'm going to go back here on this side and make a new folder and there it is there if I click down and I'm going to call it raw one edit and then 11 or two two three there we go so I'm going to go back show five stars and I'm going to select them I can select them by just dragging I can select them by selecting here and then I'm going to copy them and then I'm going to click on the raw edit page folder and I'm just going to paste them now effectively I can leave this folder alone it's safe I don't have to interfere with it anymore and this is the folder I'm done on I'm going to click on again you can see I've double clicked on this now it'll go to camera raw via Photoshop so at any time during the editing process when I was in camera raw I could have clicked this little box up here which is like a square box a rectangle with an arrow pointing down that's the bit I use to save and convert my raw files into JPEGs or whatever I want to save them into each image here has a rectangle and an arrow pointing so at any time during the process I could have just easily have picked one and converted it I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to go open desktop I just want to show you the file management now you'll see that there's what we call an XMP file associated with the image which you've been manipulating or playing with the exposure basically that is your data files that associates itself with the raw visual file you don't delete them just keep them come together as one when you convert them into another format like jpegs or png so you'll see them here i'm just going to select them all and i'm going to open them and then they'll batch in together and they'll come in together i could have done it before but there was just one so now we have three images I've done all my tweaks on them I'm going to select them by just pressing shift and 
left side of my mouse. And then I'm going to click, I can click on this one, I can click on this, can, this rectangle here. I'll just go into it. I'm going to be in the same location. I'm going to check a new folder. And in fact, I'm going to go back one step. So I've got the, I'm in the actual camera roll main folder. I'm going to make a new folder, which is raw one edit JPEGs. Eleven or two, two, three. Going to select that and then select it. I know it is there. I'm going to give it an M. I'll just call it pile. It's a JPEG. Here's your file extension. Don't get confused with the capitalization of them. You can turn them into TIFFs, Photoshop files, PNG files, DNG files. In this instance, I'm going to go into JPEG. Keeping all the metadata and keeping the quality as high as I can. The default is the actual default size coming out of the camera, 300 pixel inches. And I'm all set to go. I'm just going to save, and you'll see a little status bar. Normally, that there, there we go. There it is. There. And we're done. I'm going to press done, and I will go into the raw folder, and there's my JPEGs. And here we go. And now I'll put a little bit of contrast on. Lot more subtle than the camera raw contrast and we're done. One thing I didn't show you was one thing you can do as well is when you have selected images before you convert them into JPEGs if you right click and then move down to file info you will get all your in this is all your metadata details and your, you can add more details into it the three areas I use are basic, which is the description, title, description writer, keywords, copyright. So I'd always put copyright in there. I would put in my name, copyright, all rights reserved, the year I made the image, and maybe my website. Origin, which is the credit line and the dates and any other information like where it was shot, and the IPTC, which is my address and my email and stuff like that. So that's what I normally do if I was batching out a lot of images to a client. So when I'm in Photoshop, I can go into each individual image and click on File Info. And there I would get all the details again. When you're in Bridge, you can do some generic descriptions and then come into Photoshop later and then write in additional information, specific information. Obviously, we all have different ways of working. This is how I work. It's fast for me. It's very simple. I hope it was some help to you. Thank you.